Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit New York 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back here. Live CUBE coverage in New York City for AWS Amazon Web Services Summit 2018. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick here at theCUBE. Our next guest is Dr. Matt Wood, General Manager of Artificial Intelligence with Amazon Web Services, CUBE alumni. Been so busy for the past year, hasn't been on theCUBE <laughs> in a year. Thanks for coming back, appreciate Thanks for having spending me. the time. So promotions keep on going on. You got now general manager of the AI group, AI operations, AI automation, machine learning ops. There's a lot of big category of new things developing mm -hmm. uh, in AI. You guys have really taken AI and machine learning to a whole nother level. It's one of the key value propositions that you guys now have mm -hmm. for not just large enterprises, but down to startups and developers. So, okay. you know, congratulations and what's the update? Oh, well the update is uh, this morning in the keynote, uh, I was lucky enough to introduce some new capabilities across our platform. Uh, when it comes to machine learning, uh, our mission is that we want to be able to take machine learning and make it uh, available to all developers. We joke internally that we just want to, we want to make machine learning boring, we want to make it vanilla. It's just, it's another tool in the tool chest of any developer and any, any data, data scientist. And we've done that, this idea of taking technology that is traditionally only within reach of a very, very small number of well-funded organizations and making it as broadly distributed as possible. We've done that pretty successfully with uh, compute and storage and databases and analytics and data warehousing. And we want to do the exact same thing for, for machine learning. Um, and to do that, we had to kind of build an entirely new stack. And we think of that stack in, in three different tiers. Uh, the bottom tier really for uh, academics and researchers and data scientists um, we provide a wide range of frameworks, open source programming libraries that developers and uh, data scientists use to build neural networks and intelligent systems. They're things like TensorFlow and Apache MXNet and PyTorch, and uh, they're really, they're very technical, but you can build you know, arbitrarily sophisticated systems. Mostly there. open source too, right? Mostly open source, that's right. Uh, we contribute a lot of our work uh, back to uh, MXNet, uh, but we also contribute to PyTorch and to TensorFlow and you know, there's big, uh, healthy open source projects growing up around you know, all of these popular frameworks, plus more like Keras and Gluon and Horovod and, and all these other things. So that's a very, very, uh, uh, it's a key area for, for researchers and, and academics. Uh, the next level up, we have uh, machine learning platforms. This is for developers and data scientists who have data they see in the cloud, or that they want to move to the cloud quickly, that they want to be able to use for modeling. They want to be able to use it to build custom machine learning models. And so here we try and remove as much of the undifferentiated heavy lifting associated with doing that as possible. Mm -hmm. And this is really where SageMaker fits in. Uh, so SageMaker allows developers to quickly uh, uh, build, train, uh, optimize, and host uh, their machine learning models. And then at the top tier, uh, we have a set of AI services, which are for application developers that don't want to get into the weeds, uh, they just want to get up and running really, really quickly. And so today, uh, we announced uh, four new services, uh, really across those, that middle tier and that top tier. Uh, so for SageMaker, uh, we're very pleased to introduce a, a new streaming data uh, uh, protocol, which allows you to take data straight from S3 and pump it straight into your algorithm and straight onto the compute infrastructure. And what that means is, you no longer have to copy data from S3 onto your compute infrastructure in order to be able to start training. You just take away that step and just stream it right on there. And it's an approach that we use inside SageMaker uh, for a lot of our built-in algorithms, uh, and it significantly increases uh, the, the speed of the algorithm, and significantly, of course, decreases the cost of running the training, because you pay by the second, so any second you can save off, it's a cost saving for the customer. And, uh, the, so, and it also helps the machine learn more. That's right, yeah, you can put more data through it, absolutely, so you're no longer constrained by uh, the amount of disk space, uh, you're not even constrained by the amount of memory on the instance, you can just pump terabyte after terabyte after terabyte. And we actually uh, had another thing that I talked about in the keynote this morning, a new customer of ours, Snap, who are routinely training on over 100 terabytes of image data using SageMaker. Um, so you know, the ability to be able to pump in lots of data is one of the keys to building uh, successful machine learning applications. So we brought that capability to uh, everybody that's using TensorFlow. Now you can just have your TensorFlow model, bring it to SageMaker, do a little bit of wiring, click a button, and you just start streaming your data to your TensorFlow algorithm. What's the impact of the developer? Time, speed, money? It's, it, is, it is the ability to be able to pump more data, 
It is the uh, uh, decrease in time it takes to start the training, but most importantly, it decreases the training time all up. So you'll see between a 10 and 25% decrease in training time. So that means you can train more models, or you can train more models per in the same unit time, or you can just decrease the cost. So this is a, a completely different way of thinking about how to train over large amounts of data. Uh, we were doing it internally, and now we're making it available for everybody through SageMaker. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing that we're adding is the ability to be able to batch process in SageMaker. So SageMaker uh, used to be great at real-time uh, predictions, uh, but there's a lot of use cases where you don't want to just make a one-off prediction. Yep. You, want to pre you want to predict hundreds or thousands or even millions of things all at once. So let's say you got all of your uh, uh, sales information at the end of the month. You want to use that to make a forecast for the next month. You don't need to do that in real time. You need to do it once and then place the order. And so we added uh, batch transforms to SageMaker so you can pull in all of that data, large amounts of data, batch process it within a fully automated environment and then spin down the infrastructure and you're done. So very, very simple API. Anyone that uses a Lambda function it's, can, can take advantage of this. Again, just dramatically decreasing uh, the overhead and making it so much easier for everybody to take advantage of uh, machine learning. And then at the top layer, uh, we had uh, new capabilities for our AI services. Uh, so we announced 12 new language pairs for our translation service. Uh, and we announced a new uh, transcription uh, uh, capability, which allows us to take multi-channel audio, uh, such as might be recorded here, uh, but more commonly on contact centers. Uh, just like you have a left channel and a right channel for stereo, yeah. um, contact centers often record the agent and the customer on the same track. Uh, and today, you can now pass that through our transcribe service, long form speech, uh, we'll split it up into the channels automatically, uh, transcribe it, yeah. we'll analyze all the timestamps and create just a single script. And from there, you can see what was being talked about, you can check for topics automatically using Comprehend, uh, or you can check for compliance. Did the agent say the words that they have to say for compliance reasons uh, at some point during the conversation? Uh, so that's a, a material new capability for, uh, for Transcribe. What's the top services being used? Obviously Comprehend, Transcribe, and a variety of others. You guys have put a lot of stuff out there, um, uh, all kinds of stuff. What's the top sellers, top use usage uh, as a proxy for uh, uptake? Adoption? Yeah, I think, I think uh, we see a ton of uh, we see a ton of adoption across all of these areas, but uh, where a lot of the momentum is growing right now is SageMaker. Uh, so if you look at uh, Formula One, they just chose Formula One Racing, they just chose AWS and SageMaker as their machine learning platform. The National Football League, Major League Baseball today announced that they're you know, re-upping their relationship and their strategic partnership with AWS for machine learning. So all of these groups are using the data which just streams out of these, these races or these games. Yeah. And that can be the video, or it can be the telemetry of the cars, or the telemetry of the players, and they're pumping that through SageMaker to drive more engaging experiences for their viewers. So guys, hey, streaming this data, let's get this into SageMaker quickly, this Q video. <laughs> yeah, just get it all in there, <laughs> all of it. Well, you know we love data, we'd love to follow up on that. So the question is, is that when will SageMaker overtake Aurora as the fastest growing product in history of Amazon because <laughs> I predicted that reInvent, that SageMaker would go on a tear. Is it looking good right now? I mean, Aurora is still good. on paper, you guys are saying is yeah, the best Yeah, Aurora is still the fastest growing, but, but SageMaker, you know, give us some indicator. Well, I mean, uh, I don't, we don't break out revenue per service, um, but uh, even uh, the same excitement, I'll say this, the same excitement that I see for SageMaker now, and the same opportunity and the same momentum, it really, really reminds me of AWS 10 years ago. It's the same sort of transformative, democratizing approach yeah. to, which really engages builders, and I see the same level of uh, And the excitement at levels are super high as well. They're super high in general. Creators. There's a lot of hype out there, um, but I, I see the same level of enthusiasm and, mem and momentum. People are building with it, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, so what's this toy you have here? I know we don't have a lot of time, but this isn't you got a, toy, a little prop. John. This is uh, the world's first deep learning enabled wireless video camera. Uh, we okay. call it Deep Lens. Uh, we announced it uh, and launched it at uh, reInvent 2017. Hold it up, you hold it up for the I camera. I hold it up to the camera. Uh, it's a cute little device. Uh, we modeled it after Wall-E, the, the Pixar movie. Uh, and it is a HD video camera on the front here. And in the base here, we have a, uh, an incredibly powerful custom piece of machine learning hardware. So this can process uh, over a billion machine learning operations per second. Uh, you can take the video in real time, we send it to the, uh, it's got a GPU on board, uh, and we'll just start processing the stream in real time. 
Uh, so that's kind of interesting. But the real value of this and why we designed it was we wanted to try and find a way for developers to get literally hands-on with machine learning. So the way that uh, builders are lifelong learners, right? They, they love to learn, they have an insatiable appetite for new information and new technologies. Uh, and the way that they learn that is they experiment. They start working and they kind of spin this flywheel where you try something out, it works, you fiddle with it, yeah. it stops working, you learn a little bit more and you want to go round and round and round. Uh, that's been tried and tested for developers for, for decades. Uh, the challenge with machine learning is doing that is still very, very difficult. You need labeled data, you need to understand the algorithms. Uh, it's just, it's hard to do. But with Deep Lens, uh, you can get up and running in 10 minutes. Uh, so it's connected back to the cloud, it's connected back to SageMaker. Uh, you can deploy a pre-built model down onto the device in 10 minutes to do object detection. We do uh, some wacky visual effects with neural style transfer. Uh, we do uh, hot dog and no hot dog detection, <laughs> of course. Uh, but the real value comes in that you can take any of those models, tear them apart inside SageMaker, start fiddling around with them, and then immediately deploy them back down onto the camera. And every developer on their desk has things that they can detect. They have pens and cups and people, whatever it is. So they can very, very quickly spin this flywheel where they're experimenting, changing, succeeding, failing, and just going round and round and round. So that's for developers, your target audience yeah, for this, right? Okay. Right. And what are some of the things that have come out of this? Have you seen any cool um, yes. evolutionary you know, demos? It, it has been uh, uh, incredibly gratis gratifying and really humbling to see developers that have no machine learning experience take this out of the box and build some really wonderful projects. Uh, one really good example is uh, 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 exercise detection. So you know when you're doing a workout, they build a model which detects the exercise you're doing and then detects the reps of the weights that you're lifting. Uh, we saw skeletal mapping, so you could map a person in 3D space using a, a simple camera. We saw security features where you could put this on your door and then uh, it would send you a text message if it didn't recognize who was in front of the door. Uh, we saw one which was amazing, which would read books aloud to kids. Uh, so you would hold up the book uh, and it would detect the text, extract the text, send the text to Polly, and then speak aloud for the kids. So there's games, there's educational tools, there's little security gizmos. Uh, one uh, group even uh, trained a dog detection model, which detected individual species, plugged this into an enormous power pack, and took it to the local dog park so that they could test it out. So it's uh, all of this from, from a cold start with no machine learning experience. You having fun? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, if you can't tell, I'm super passionate about this. Uh, one of the great things about machine learning is you don't just get to work in one area, you get to work in, uh, you get to work in Formula One and sports, yeah. and you get to work in healthcare, and you get to yeah. work in retail and, and developer tooling. I mean, so. CTO's going to love this, chief toy officers. Chief toy officers, I love it, yes. So I got to ask you, so what's new in your world, GM of AI, artificial intelligence, what does that mean? Just quickly explain it for the, our, our audience. Is that all the software? I mean, what specifically are you overseeing? What's your purview within the, the realm of AWS? Yeah, that's, that's a totally fair question. So my purview is I run the products for deep learning, machine learning and artificial intelligence, really across uh, the AWS machine learning team. So I get it, I have a, a lot of fingers and a lot of pies. I get involved in uh, the new products that we're going to go build out. I get involved in helping uh, grow usage of existing products. Uh, I get it to do a lot of invention, spend a ton of time with customers. But overall, work with the rest of the team on setting the technical and product strategy for machine learning at AWS. And what's your top priorities this year? Adoption, uptake, new product introductions. I mean, you guys don't stop well, introducing. We don't stop. We don't I mean, stop. you keep on introducing more and more things. Um, any high ground that you want to take? What's the What's the vision? I think the vision is to uh, is genuinely to continue to make it as easy as possible for developers to use machine learning. I can't overstate the importance uh, or the challenge. So we're not at the point where you can just pull down some Python code and figure it out. Uh, we're not even, we don't have a JVM for machine learning where there's no, there's no developer tools or debuggers. There's very few visualizers. So it's still very hard. If you, if you kind of think of it in computing terms, we're still working in assembly language in yeah. machine learning. And so there's this wealth of opportunity ahead of us. And the, the responsibility I, that I feel very strongly is to be able to continually improve on that stack. 
to continually bring new capabilities to more developers. Well, cloud has been disrupting uh, IT operations, AI ops, uh, what they're calling it, Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and the venture circles, auto ML mm -hmm. is a term that's been kicked around, auto, automatic machine learning. Mm -hmm. You got to train the machines with something, data yep. seems to be it. Well, what yep. strikes me about this compared to storage or compared to compute or compared to some of the core Amazon foundational products, those were just better ways to do something that already existed. This is not a better way to do something that already exists. This is a way to get the democratization at the start yep. of the process of, of the application of machine yep. learning and artificial intelligence to a plethora of applications and use cases. That is fundamentally yeah, I, different I, and, a, and just a step up in terms I of totally agree. the I power to the it, hands of the people. It, it's something which is very fast, it's an area which is very fast moving and very fast growing. But what's funny is it totally builds on top of the cloud. And you really can't do machine learning in any meaningful production way unless you have a way that is cheap and easy to collect large amounts of data right. in a way which allows you to pull down yeah. high performance computation at any scale that you need it. And so through the cloud, we've actually laid the foundations uh, for machine learning going forwards. And, and other things too coming. Oh, sure, You sure, got yeah. sets of services you guys announced. The cloud highlights the power yeah. that it brings to these new capabilities. Absolutely, yeah. And we, we get to build on them at, at AWS and at Amazon, just like our customers do. And so, you know, SageMaker runs on EC2. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do SageMaker without EC2. And, you know, in the fullness of time, we see that, you know, the usage of machine learning could be as big, if not bigger, than the whole of the rest of AWS combined. And that's our aspiration. Dr. Matt Wood, I wish we had more time to chat. Loved talking with you. Um, I'd love to do a whole other segment on what you're doing with customers. I know you guys are very customer focused, as Andy always mentions when on theCUBE, you guys listen to customers. Um, Want to hear that. Maybe cool. at reInvent, we'll circle back. Sounds good. Uh, congratulations on your success. Great to see you. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Dr. Thank Matt you. Wood Cheers. here in theCUBE. We're streaming all this data out to the Amazon Cloud. It's where we host all of our stuff, of course. This is theCUBE bringing you live action here in New York City for CUBE coverage of AWS Summit 2018 in Manhattan. We'll be back with more after this short break.